starts on the feed so this may okay. just pick up right in the middle of of me talking uh and and that'll be just fine i actually changed the stream information so hey you know what i bet we're live right now hey Very heroes possible. Hey heroes, this is Tracy, the uh, project manager for OneShot, and today here in a lovely promotional demoing capacity for my own game, Iron Edder Reforged Season 1, Jotunheim, which is currently on Kickstarter and funded today. Uh, so I'm very pleased about that. Uh, it's also a podcast on the OneShot Podcast Network called Puppet Strings, starring myself and B. Zelda and Alex Flanagan and Jeff Stormer. Today, I'm here to play Iron Edder Reforge with two absolutely lovely, lovely human beings. Ryan, let's start with you. Ryan, why don't you introduce yourself to the people? Hello, uh, my name is Ryan Bolter. Uh, you may know my voice from uh, one of the two co-hosts on the character creation cast right here on the One Shot Podcast Network. Um, I also do the sound design and editing uh, and producing for a horror borealis also here on the one shot podcast network um and i also do the dialogue editing uh for the the final season of uh the broadswords um, yeah and, and i'm doing a whole bunch of other stuff if you follow me on twitter at lord neptune uh you can get a, a nice little uh sampling of all the fun things that i do as i post about them wonderful and the person below Ryan in y'all's view is Gannon Reedy. Gannon, introduce yourself. What's up? My name's Gannon Reedy. Uh, I'm here in uh, Houston, chilling. I'm on, uh, you can find my work in uh, the freaking podcast Neo Scum. Uh, I'm the game master. Uh, so uh, check it out or don't, you know? Uh <laughs> Up to you. There's all sorts of choices you can make in life, but uh, yeah, I'm, I'm I'm just I'm ex I'm excited to get reforged tonight. That's right. Mm -hmm. You know, uh, it's funny again. And uh, when I hear you say game master, uh, I have listened to Neo Scum all the way through so many times that the thing that popped into my head that I almost just blurted out was an <laughs> imitation of Casey Tony going, "What's a game master?" from the very first episode. <laughs> I just listened to that. Oh, yeah. Uh, just listened to that. that I, I, way back uh, when, I, I think it was when the um, the Trans Lifeline uh, promo was going on for one shot. This is, what, three, four years ago. Um, mm -hmm. And Neo Scum was relatively new to the network. And I was like, you know, I don't give... I don't give a shit about Shadowrun. I'm not gonna... Right. <laughs> I, I'm not gonna... I'm not gonna listen to this. And then... Like the promos were all over one shot, and I was like, you know what, I'm gonna give it a shot. And that <laughs> that intro, that intro absolutely sold me, because oh, it really imme funny. it immediately laid down the vibe of what you all were gonna be offering, uh, <laughs> and it has since only gotten better, like a fine wine. It has aged. <laughs> yes. Well, thank you. That's very very kind of you to say. Uh, well, yes. you know, I I speak only the truth. Uh, I have a few. I have a, a, a precious few favorite things in this world, and Neo Scum is one of them. And I mm -hmm. don't mind saying so in front of whomever's going to listen to me. Some some would say it's good. Some Neo, some have said that. You know, Neo Scum You'd be the judge. Neo Scum good. I think. Yeah. You know. So today we are going to play Iron Edda Reforged. Uh, now Ryan, I uh, did part of this process with you on character creation cast uh, yeah. as as a technically it was a it was a shorter episode but we still managed to go all the way through the character creation process and to, to talk about the entire system so uh -huh. i think that and yeah. It, yeah we pretty much got all the way to the part where we would start playing and then we just stopped playing yep. <laughs> saturn's moon in the chat just said they just paused listening to neo scum to watch the stream perfect that's amazing right on, right on. that's amazing um and ganon uh, you and i have been talking about other things and in the process mm -hmm. of talking about other things i have given you access to the game document so you've seen uh what's up here uh oh, yeah. but for for those who are not familiar iron edda reforged is a cyberpunk take on a norse ragnarok where instead of having to struggle against the end of the world, Ragnarok is the twilight of the gods. You, the oppressed people in your communities, are going to rise up and take down the gods. 
Uh, Ragnarok is an inevitability in Norse myth. It is going to happen the way it's going to happen, and it, it just does. And so you know you're going to be successful. The point of playing this game is to figure out what that looks like. Uh, Iron Eater Reforged uh, is built in seasons. This is season one, and the realm that we start in is Jotunheim, Giant Home. Uh, but unfortunately, in uh, this version of Norse myth, uh, the giants' bodies and brains and spirits have been subjugated by the gods and now make up the computer network that runs everything in the Nine Realms. Um, so it's not fantastic. It's not a great place to be, but you get to make a lot of really cool people, and I mean a lot of really cool people, because you can make and play this story however you want to with whomever's point of view you wish to use. Uh, we will start off by each making a character, but as we get to playing scenes... When we meet new people, we're going to quickly build them out the same way we build our characters, detail them, and if, as in the, the demo I did on Tuesday, your main character it would not be in that scene, that's fine. You pick one of the people who's in the scene that we already know about, and you play them for that scene, and we roll on. Uh, it uh, works really well, if I do say so myself. So, mm -hmm. um, But characters are nothing without context, and to figure out what the context is, we are going to build the neighborhood that we're starting in. So Ryan, Gannon, you have two neighborhoods to choose from. You have the neighborhood of Puppet Strings, which is a set of ever-shifting platforms uh, that is built of very sharp tendon and sinew, uh, where everything is sort of constantly moving around. Uh, or you have the neighborhood of the Column, which is a massive tower block made from the fused column of a giant's spine. Uh, the gods built this as like a public works project and it was quickly abandoned and let fall into disrepair and now it's 300 levels of self-maintained community in Jotunheim. So, what appeals? Well, I'm liking the column. How do you I feel, am, Ryan? I, I am also liking that column. I like the column. Yeah. All right. I we like, like the column. Them, but, uh, but the column tonight, please. Okay, mm -hmm. the column it is. So if you're looking at the document with me, you two, the questions for the column start on page 12. And uh, just above that, there is a picture of the official art of the column uh, that you can. Yeah, while uh, while oh, you. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Sweet. Well, Sweet. And, and see, I'm oh, nice. I'm not. I, it feels like a little bit of a tease uh, to to just say that and not show people what's actually going on. I know, right? So, so I'm gonna I'm gonna vamp for a minute. Um, while I'm vamping, uh, do you all have dice handy? Because you will need six sided oh, yeah. dice, a la Shadow Run. Uh, you'll need uh, how at least many ten. do we need? At, at least, least ten. ten. Oh, that's right. Oh, I love it. I if have you to do run out of the room for a minute, run out of the room real quick. See, I'm I'm I'm, I'm vamping to find an image, so we're fine. I am pulling out my my blue. Oh, you're pulling out, pulling out the cube. Pulling out the cube of cubes. <laughs> All That's right, and sound. transform, fit to screen. There we are, people watching at home. That, in the middle of this stream, is the column. Uh, that is the official art by Juan Ochoa. Uh, Juan did an amazing, amazing job with all of the art for this game. I am sincerely blown away by everything he has done. And this is the space that the players, Ryan, Gannon, myself, are going to be occupying. So we make that Vemus, and now we are all back with dice. Beautiful. Fantastic. Uh, Gannon, you introduced yourself second, so I'm going to ask you to go first for your question. So go ahead and roll a d6, and that will give you sort of the time frame that the question occupies. Okay, sounds good. Here's my D6, and we're going to let it rip. What do we got? We got a five. A five. So it is Mists of the Future. Go ahead and roll one more time. Okay. Another five. Five. Here is your question. A developer has placed an offer to buy out the 224th to 230th floors to put in a new farm production facility. Why can't they be trusted? Mm, okay. 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 So, so it's the name of this farm 
is uh, it, let's say no one recognizes it. Let's say it's uh, Schwilter, uh, Schwilter and Sons farming operation, and no one has heard of them before, and that's unusual. Like, even though it's we're many hundreds of stories up in the air in mm -hmm. this final column, uh, these communities form, and uh, you know, word of mouth whispers, and but no one in any of these communities has heard of this before and the meat is delicious but it has a strange texture to it uh mm. and uh, uh all of the people who work in the farm are from lands beyond the spine mm -hmm. so no one really knows what's going in there but they keep eating that meat because it's pretty good all right Ooh. Cool. So, uh, Ryan, you will notice a difference here. Uh, normally, yeah. in previous Iron Yetta games we have played, I would be asking you to draw something on a map to represent your answer to the question. Yeah. I realized in my playtest with Spencer on Tuesday, uh, that really doesn't serve any purpose anymore. I, I, I kind of figured that uh, from our uh, quote-unquote playtest doing a yeah. character creation cast. Yeah, it, uh, it's a vestigial piece of Iron Edda that comes from the previous versions of the game that I had mm -hmm. written, uh, where knowing the, the, the places and the things that have distance between them are really kind of important, and as you go and do things and uncover new areas you add to the map, doesn't really have a purpose here in Reforged, mm -hmm. so we are not going to do that. Oh, uh, instead, I'm just going to ask you to roll a d6 and to get your top level category. Yeah, so I got a 2. A 2, which is ties to the past. Yeah, and I got another 2. Another 2. There's a cable that someone ran into your flat years ago. They're long gone now. Where does it go? And what does it provide you? Ooh, so I like this. Um... So I think it uh, it is a cable that connects to um, kind of the network in a uh, in an uh, out of the place way. Okay. Like a like a like a like a hidden access port to the network of sorts. So like in a clandestine way. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, and nobody's really understood it entirely. Um, but I think it, um, I think it provides me a, like, more direct link to communicate with the giants. All right. Fantastic. And I am going to add a question as well. Uh, in case anyone watching is curious, this game is a hair's breadth away from being GMless. Uh, I mm -hmm. am acting in the role of narrator, but we all have so much narrative control in this game that as long as any given group knows sort of the procedural bits to do, everyone can just kind of play. So, yeah. uh, especially because the GM's characters are built the exact same way as everybody else. So, I'm going to... <laughs> roll as well and i got a four that's the here and now nice. we're getting all three categories and a six um a local vid team is trying to make a documentary about the column why are they using your flat as a film studio and what do you not want to appear on screen so uh, let me paste that in there they're using my flat let's see um I think they're using my flat because I have no choice. <laughs> I think that the uh, the way the crew is set up, there are some particularly muscle-bound individuals, and they kind of just moved in here because the column is still ostensibly run by the corporations, mm. right? So if someone shows up with the right like permits and passes and things, you don't really have a whole lot of say. In, in what's going on, because this is the mm -hmm. kind of society uh, that, that we live in. Um, what I don't want them to see is that, uh, Ryan, I think my flat is adjacent to your character's flat. Yeah. And I think that cable, like, runs through a corner of my flat as well. Ooh. And because it connects in the way that it does, I think it has some 
So like all tech in this setting has some bit of giant stuff in it. Yeah. Right. Um, there's a little bioorganic uh, component you're going on. But I think this particular thing is actually like a full on neuron. Right. Like the, the, the tendril mm-hmm. of, a, of an yeah, actual yeah, neuron, yeah. which would mean it's really high bandwidth and really uh, mm-hmm. deeply connected. Uh, and it also is like just an organic wire running through my house, which is not the kind of thing that they need to see. Um, exactly. So I don't. I don't want them to see the cable running to the other apartment. Okay, fantastic. We have just made our neighborhood. These are our story hooks. Uh, What we're going to do real quick is we are going to flip over to the story tracker. That's slide five. And we are going to uh, build these things out just a little bit so we have uh, some idea of what we're sort of playing towards, right? Okay. Uh, So we have a few different plot hooks. We have the the mysterious, uh, what did I say? Farm production facility. Mysterious farm, let's just say. We have the uh, uh, clandestine cable um and we have the documentary crew uh what we do now is we have a decision to make Mm -hmm. because there are three gods who sort of have residence in jotunheim and one of them is the target of sort of the cell of the resistance that we are kind of representing Mm -hmm. so the question is who do you want to take down because once we decide that, we look at these bits of story that we have here and we figure out what the end point of them sort of is, either for good or for ill, and yeah. how that ties into which god we're going to dethrone. I mean, I've right got on. a suggestion. Go for it. What you got, Ryan? Uh, well, the, the god of knowledge. I forget the name. Mimir. Mimir. All right, because uh, it, it it feels like with the the documentary, uh, that's all about knowledge. Uh, the cable mm-hmm. connects you to knowledge, um, and a, a mystery, uh, also about knowledge. It just kind of feels like there's a theme going on there. Ah, good call. That works for me. Um, let's see. Uh... So I am just putting a few little starting points here. So uh, that should say set up, not dead up. (laughs) (laughs) Uh, So basically, you can see there's a couple boxes sort of underneath each of these things, right? And as we establish our characters and and build out the story, we may sort of check some of these boxes. Uh, Two Mm -hmm. marked boxes means that that piece is basically taken care of, right? where for the farm, we kind of have an idea of who they are. The cable, we're, we've made sure that the information is going to keep flowing and, and that the documentary crew gets set up with you know, no one being the wiser. What we need to do is we need to figure out what the endpoints are going to be. Mm-hmm. And then we can fill in the stuff in the middle as we keep playing, right? Because we're always going to know where we're aiming, with these things. The interesting part of the story in Iron Eddie Reforged is figuring out how you get there and how the end is different than what your initial expectations were. Mm -hmm. Uh, So for the mysterious farm, what's the end point? We start with finding out who they are. What, how does this unravel into the fall of Mimir? Okay. Uh, End point. Uh, the first thing that comes to me is um, the uh, they continue to grow and become more successful and buy up a few more floors and push a few more uh, people in different directions. Okay. Cool. cool. So uh, unchecked growth. Mm-hmm. Okay. That seems that seems bad. So that right, this would th- this would be a track that past the first boxes we probably want to prevent stuff from getting marked, right? Because mm-hmm. we there's a threat we need to stop. Uh, for the clandestine cable, um, 
I, I've got a thought for this one. Um, yeah. I feel like this is a way to really get an in to Mimir's archive, which mm -hmm. Mimir's, uh, the way Mimir approaches knowledge is very uh, avaracious, right? You can get knowledge from the archive that this God maintains, but you will always give more than you get. Mm -hmm. And this is a way to get information, data from Mimir's archive without having to give. Yeah. That, Which that's is, a, a, a right along the same lines I was thinking. Nice. Yeah. Uh, so I'm just going to call this the back door, right? Yeah. Because it's it's the it's the way into Mimir's actual actual data stores, mm -hmm. uh, which cool. could be like Mimir collects data on everything. So you're going to find out so many things from just having that basic access. Think of how many other gods we could take down with that information. Yes. Uh, now the documentary crew, um, they're a corp run documentary crew. They are here to do a, a probably like a propaganda piece about the column, right? Mm -hmm. To try and make the corpse look good. What's what's our end goal with them? Or what's their end goal? Maybe they catch a little bit more on camera than they want to have on camera. I, w I was also thinking if if they're doing a documentary, um, what if it's what if it's more of like a propaganda that it's like documentary as or propaganda as a documentary, mm -hmm. um, and like if we 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 could we have an opportunity to make the the citizens and the resistance look a lot better than they would want to portray us. Okay. So it seems like we got a couple of different angles here. We can, I, I, I think maybe we can, we can merge these two together, right? So if they're, if they're capturing more than they had anticipated there, I, I, if I'm, if I'm reading you right, Ganon, they are gathering information that paints the column and its maintenance in a bad light. Right. Yeah. It's, it's, it's right. all it's all the rundown. It's all the, mm -hmm. you know, everything the corpse have not done to mm -hmm. to keep this place going well. That, to Ryan's point, can be used to paint a sympathetic light over the people who live there, and the bits that are well maintained, it can be made obvious that the corpse have nothing to do with it. Yeah. Yeah. I like and, that. And and if if that stuff is. Uh, saturating the documentary to that point, they either have to run with it and make the column look good for the people and bad for the corpse, or mm -hmm. they can't produce it at all. Yeah. Okay. So. Oh, I like it. Um, community boosted one way or the other. So yeah. cool. This is sort of what we're going to be looking at. Uh, Story-wise, as we as we play through this, now obviously all of this isn't going to get resolved in this play session, right? We're gonna what? We're, 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 look, Ryan, I'm good, but I'm not that good. Um, <laughs> uh, but we're going to we have these elements to work with, and uh, that takes us to making characters. Ooh, yeah. Cool. Slide three. Uh, so members of the resistance are uh, actually all characters are built the same way, and members of the resistance have a particular. Uh, set of things that they do. So all we do is we go through and we look at these uh, these boxes here and we just fill them out, right? We give everyone a name, uh, a warrior clan. Uh, the warrior clans in the document start on page 19. Um, we give them a gender. Uh, each of the sort of um, methods of interacting, the ways that the warrior clans have, have genders associated with them. And these genders are all uh, sort of sleepaway style evocative phrases uh, feel free to use the ones that I have written there if you uh, read them and you're like "Ooh, I understand the vibe of this and I want to come up with one of my own that's absolutely fine too uh, then we give them details uh, details are short descriptive phrases that are true and details are also how dice come into play when we get to rolling the dice right so uh, if you give a character a detail of um, handy with an axe right 
and you put that on their good detail, well then anytime you need to use an ax for anything, you roll seven dice because that's just there and present. Uh, and then you give them some gear. Uh, gear is just any piece of tech or equipment or whatever you can think of. Uh, if it's outside the realm of what the setting actually does, I'll let you know, but Canon is very flexible in this game. Mm -hmm. uh, and then you give them some pronouns. That's it. That's a character. Very nice. Yeah. Um, for those listening, while you two uh, read, I'm going to run down the warrior clans. There are 10 of them. And they are the bear, uh, whose so focus is sort of strength and power. Uh, there's the bone bonded. Uh, the bone bonded are the people who have bound themselves to the spirits of dead giants and can actually bring forth some uh, some approximation of their physical form into the world. Uh, there's the dragon clan, which is all about channeling emotions. Uh, the hammer clan, which is uh, building and shaping. The horse, which is physical movement and delivery. The ox, which is endurance and protection. Uh, the raven clan, which is secrets and, and magic. The snake, which is stealth and covert operations. The sparrow is stories and words, and the wolf is group cohesion and recruitment. So yeah, some clans to pick from. Some clans to yeah. pick from. That's I mean, right. I've, I've known mine since you've asked me to to join. <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, go ahead and write it down there. Uh, the people who are watching will see that because that is the slide that is active and up on the screen. So, All right. Uh, what 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 column am I going to be? Uh, you're in the middle. You're right there. Yeah, I see you. Wonderful. So perfect. Run with that, and I'm gonna resize that window a little bit so people can see all three characters. There we go. And I'll take the one on the right. All right. Do 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 do. And it doesn't matter if we duplicate clans. So don't don't sweat that too much. Excellent. And I'm going with bone bonded. Nice. I think I'm gonna go with hammer. Sweet, and I'm bear. Nice. nice. And with a uh, heart of bone uh, for my gender. Ooh, very good. I got ex an exposed dagger in the gender department. I like it. And my gender is ozone from a burnt wire. Right. Now the details again. Can you explain that one more time? For yes. This fool over here. Oh, you're not a fool. It's a. It's just a new concept. So basically, um, think of three sort of broad ways you would describe this person's uh, outlook on the world or the activities they undertake or the things that they're interested in. Uh, and uh, for example, um, for my excellent detail, I put, if it ain't broke, I can break it. Right? Because that mm -hmm. describes sort of their view of technology and how it all works and also a set of things they can actually bring to bear on on situations uh when the dice are, are required okay yeah and they can be you know kind of vague and esoteric um it's it's just it's about representing your character and you will find in play ways that you can uh justify the use of certain ones for dice rolls That's amazing. Uh, I just looked over at your uh, at your at your character there, Ganon, and we we uh, we just crossed the streams a little bit, and it's really uh, it's really excellent. <laughs> like oh that. yeah, yeah. Yours is passionate gambler, and mine is never say no to a bet. There you go. <laughs> I love it. 
All right. And then, like I said, for gear, it can be, you know, really whatever you want. You can leave these blank uh, and come up with them in the moment uh, as you as you see fit. And um, the thing to remember about gear is if your piece of gear uh, will help you on a, on a roll, on a risky action you're taking, then you will add one die to your pool. Uh, and if your gear would hinder you in some way, you will take a die away uh, from your pool. so i'm using shadow run terms that's fine <laughs> and gila rpgs i see you in the chat there shout out to the raven clan and the flock that is from our tuesday session um oh nice which i very much appreciate uh yeah spencer was the the person who was on stream with me uh that day oh, so yeah in clear detail And then, um, Ganon, what do you want to name your character? Oh, yeah. Oh, okay. <laughs> Kurt Hamvetter. You, you are so good with names. Thank you. That's much. one of your superpowers. I love it. You could call that my excellent detail. Yes. <laughs> Always handy with a name love that okay um so we've got uh we've got the characters so let's run these down real quick for the people who are watching because i'm not sure if the text is is legible on the play space <laughs> it's very tiny it is uh i will start with mine uh i'm i've got i've made uh ulfred brightblade from the hammer clan uh gender is ozone from our burnt wire excellent detail is if it ain't broke i can break it a uh, good detail is there's nothing enough solder won't fix and a fair detail is never say no to a bet uh, they carry a multi-tool and a worn leather apron. And that is, that's their deal. Again, uh, why don't you go ahead and introduce... Certainly, certainly. Yeah. Uh, my name is Kurt Hambutter. I'm of the Bear Clan. We're kind of a, you know, strength and force kind of a bunch of guys. Uh, gender is an exposed dagger. So take take of that what you will. Uh, hey, kitty. Come here. <clears throat> All right. <laughs> Here's Georgie. Um, Hi, Georgie. Excellent detail. Love to chill, dude. I'm a passionate gambler. That's my good detail. Uh, my fair detail is I'm good at push-ups, especially in front of a crowd. I carry with me a big piece of splintered spinal club. Like, it's like a big... It's not like a club, like, you know, like a... Like a uh, you know Flintstones like you know big mm -hmm. like it's like a, sort of like a long sticky kind of staffy looking thing but it's mm. a spinal column so it's a little spiky and uh, it's not you know not super violence ready but it like, does the job <laughs> I've got four cigarettes um, which should last me a day and I have uh, about uh, let's say I've got two dice play two dice. craps with uh prize him very nice wonderful uh i uh just i clicked over to twitter real quick to see how the, the the retweet was doing and i realized that when i typed that tweet for the one shot network uh the twitch channel i put down was uh one shit rpg <laughs> and not one shot rpg <laughs> so um um i mean apologies <laughs> i totally biffed 
<laughs> the tw the Twitch. <laughs> oh no! Everybody's going <laughs> going to that other one. One shit. Who, who knows? Who knows what's going on there right now? Uh one shot RPG. Hey, that's better. Slash. Ah, <laughs> uh, people. Uh, always, always proofread your tweets, even if you're doing them quickly. Uh -huh. <laughs> just double, doing it, especially if you're doing them quickly. Yeah, just double check that stuff because they haven't given us an edit button yet. Um, <laughs> so cool. Um, now that that's sorted out, Ryan, why don't you introduce your character? <laughs> <laughs> All right, uh, let me get back to that page there. Um, okay, so I am uh, Sefa Brigetta, uh, bone bonded. A gender is a heart of bone. Uh, excellent detail of my family gives me my strength. Good detail of don't underestimate my kindness. And a fair detail of you will know when I am your friend. Nice. Um, gear, a hardwired deck, whatever that means. Mm-hmm. A uh, stylish leather jacket and a sleek energy blade. Very good. Pronouns of she, her. Awesome. Uh, so we have one more thing to do for your character then, Ryan. On slide four, we have a bone bonded to make. Oh, we have a giant nice. that we need to make. So there are three of us. Each of us will handle one detail for the giant. Uh, these do not have dice types attached to them. Um, when the giant is actually sort of summoned into the world, they just sort of get to act and do big, uh, big things. But we need to know who this giant is and how they sort of carry themselves uh, through, uh, through things. Mm -hmm. So uh, I'm thinking of one, um, and that is going to be Amir's former rival. Mm. Right in Norse myth, the gods and the gi and giants are like they're almost interchangeable, right? In a lot of a lot of fashions, at least in terms of power. And I think that this was a giant uh, who was after the same things Mimir was after way, way, way back. And Mimir got the upper hand, and now this giant has been relegated to the core network. Mm -hmm. All right. What are you thinking, uh, Cannon? Let's see. Let's see. A bone bonded giant. Uh, what's I, 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 a nice visual element would be great. So let's say like where there's a physically like where a bone would appear. It's it's sort of like. Like there'd be three bones where one bone would be, so uh, it's it's a very sort of uh, Geigerian, uh, um, complex-looking uh, physical form. Cool. Okay. So how are you going to represent that in a, a short pithy phrase? Yeah. Um, <laughs> uh, 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 three bones where one should be. Oh hell yes. That's like amazing. That. Yeah, go ahead and type that in uh, in detail too there. And then, uh, Ryan, what are you thinking? Let's see. Um, I'm thinking... Gosh. Uh, I, I wanted to say something like... Um, like bridges the gap between giant and humanity. Mm -hmm. um, that's probably, that that might be good enough. Bridges the gap between giants and humanity. That's, yeah. that's solid. Let's roll with it. Solid. All right. These are our people. We have our situations. We have all the components that we need to begin playing. So we are a little bit ahead of schedule on that, but still, I think now is a good time to take a quick break. 
uh, to stretch and, and refresh beverages and whatnot and give all this stuff a chance to percolate. And then uh, we'll be back in about five, 10 minutes and we will get going with all of this, all of this play. So uh, here comes the be right back screen.
And we are back. Myself, Tracy Barnett, Ryan Bolter, Gannon Reedy, Ironetta Reforged. You know it. Maybe. You're learning it. You love it, I hope. Anyway, we're all here. We're doing this thing. And we are ready to actually begin playing. So, fellows, we have a bunch of story threads uh, in front of us right now. We know that Mimir is our target. We have the Mysterious Farm that is currently taking up the 224th to 230th floors. We have the clandestine cable that is running into uh, uh, Sifa's uh, flat and also running through mine. And we have the documentary crew that is set up in my flat to try and make a propaganda piece for the uh, corporations that we hope to disrupt in some in some form or fashion. Mm-hmm. Uh, so which of these story threads do we want to uh, follow right now? Well, uh, let's uh, let's 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 start that you know it's a nice setup I think is a documentary crew right so mm-hmm. then, like the first thing you see is like the first thing you see is an eye entering this thing and so through the documentary crew and around the documentary crew we'll understand better what we're looking at. Great. Um, so you, you, I, I feel like you're on the verge of like describing what the camera we're looking through sees here. Mm-hmm. So why don't you go ahead and describe my flat, uh, specifically not, not my flat, uh, but, uh, Ulfred's flat and, uh, how the crew is sort of set up around there. What do you, what, what do you have going okay. on in your mind's okay. eye there? Okay. Okay. So I'm, uh, I've got Kowloon walled city vibes. Mm-hmm. We're this is a a cramped like you know like let's say we're the camera's like way far out looking at this single spine raising above I'm not sure exactly what the environment looks like but I'm gonna say steps yep. like the steps of Mongolia uh, sort of a steppy region wind plains desolate 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 in the distance we see a black uh, 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 shadow so rising up into the clouds come close 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 closer of course it is the uh the spine the spinal column and the camera's just moving closer and closer and closer and the closer you get you can see that like it has been like modified and like there's like all these like wires running in and out and there's like all these holes and windows bored into the side some broken windows and we move up close to one window. It's a, 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 let's say it's a totally sparkling clean window. It's surrounded by broken and filthy windows, but this is like eerily clean. And the camera just like goes right through the window. We can see there's a documentary crew uh, grunt who's like washing down the window, like like furiously he's soaked in sweat because he's been doing this for like an hour trying to get like cooking (laughs) grime off because there's um there's like a hot plate thing like right underneath him Mm -hmm. where it's like tons of like grease and shit has just like been flying up there's another grunt who's been bringing up water from like three floors below so that just so that they can get a clean look at this window and like this place is cramped like this is this is a one room apartment. Um, there's a like uh, there's a there's not even a bed. There's just like some rags on the floor. Mm-hmm. But but for for this they've they've kind of brought in a, you know they couldn't get a bed up you know like a hundred <laughs> so stories. But they're they, they're they refurbishing of... Ulfred's apartment to try and make it. <laughs> <laughs> you know they're they're massaging it a little. You I know? love it. So they got a sleeping bag and they're like look. You can keep it. Bonus for you, you know. Uh, there's a sleeping bag, you know. There's like, you know, like a little bit of like, like a laptop or something that's like hooked in. And there's just like the ceiling. There's no, like it's just like you know this ashy bone covered in grease where the camera isn't gonna look like that sort of like uh, n- 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 nitty gritty dirty grease thing. And then just like wires running in and out. Like there's like bores like there's holes bored into like all this like bone and then um uh that's that's the general feeling you know i lay it to you to you know maybe personalize it a little bit more with the decorations and whatnot but uh, filthy small and there's like you know a dozen people and it's cramped. Mm-hmm. all right cool 
both of you flip over to slide seven with me real quick. Uh, we are not going to do a full dozen people, but we have outlined <laughs> crew grunt one, crew grunt two, and I oh, there's probably and there's probably a director, right? Yeah, yeah. it's got to be. Okay, so um, the reason it says blurb next to those is that uh, people who work for the corp uh, who are not collaborators with the resistance they just get a blurb they don't get a clan right because yeah. a clan confers specific abilities every warrior clan has special dice abilities and so on and so forth um the the sort of byline that i came up with on tuesday that i'm going to be putting into the game is collaborators get clans so that's how you know whether or not to just give someone a quick blurb or to assign them a warrior clan oh, nice. we are going to detail at least these three people uh because cool. it's possible when we kick this scene off that all three of us aren't going to be in this space, right? It may just be oh. Ulfred, and we need people to play. Yeah. Uh, so I will take uh, Crew Grunt 1. Uh, Ganon, who do you want? I'll do Crew Grunt 2. And let's just say, you know, let's say it's like a sort of like early, early like Werner Herzog documentary thing. We only have three. We don't need a dozen people. Okay. A dozen people wouldn't even fit. Let's just say it's, it's, it's spare. There's like... One of these guys is a cameraman. One of these guys is a sound. One's like a director. Okay, yeah, cool. Doing all the work. Uh, then uh, I'm going to make Crew Grunt 1 the sound engineer. Nice. Uh, which means that number two is uh, the camera operator. Nice. All right, so uh, names and details. Just run them down real quick, and then we'll, we'll hop back in. Um, Fantastic. We, right. we, we, we just knocked that out. Uh, so uh, the sound engineer's name, Fleet, is Kilbane. Uh, detail one, just here for the job, man. Uh, two, uh, paychecks ain't enough. And detail three is, se pardon me, is secret flask. Terrific. Next up, we, of course, have Mervyn Cudd, the camera operator. And uh, let's say, uh, what do you call it? What's the, what's the term? I got totally blank. Went to, went to school for this. What was it? What was it? The 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 what, the, the setting up the shot guy. So, so it's camera operator and setting up the shot director of photography. Okay, so we've got Mervin Cud. Now detail number one is naturally this guy's got an eye for a shot. Yeah, he's a hired gun guy, but he got to his position because he has enough chops that he knows what sells and what the people like to see. So. He has a bit of a nice artistic vision that can sell commercially. He's detail oriented. He knows, you know, for a job like this, we got to do this. We got to be up at this time. We got to do this. Uh, da, 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 da. He also is always covered in sweat. I like it. Uh, and our director is Sheldon Franker. Uh, detail one I have a vision, uh, probably why uh, Mervin's on board as well. Um, detail two Where's my donut? Uh, and detail three. <laughs> Who put that there? <laughs> All right, so here's my suggestion for kicking off this scene. Um, scenes, much like we did with the, the story elements, right? We will find an end point for this scene, and we will play towards it. That way we have uh, some motivation, and we know sort of what we're shooting for. But I think that the three original characters that we established, that they are all next door in Sifa's flat, yes. right? And I think it's just this crew in Ulfred's flat. And I think that we can do a little bit of a, of a split take thing because I think the clandestine cable that's running through, because it's just sort of present in the room, instead of t using it to tap into whatever uh, it's connected to, you can isolate segments of it. And because it's just a living vibrating thing, it, picks up at least sound waves bouncing off of it right mm -hmm. so you can at least hear what's going on and if you're technologically savvy enough 
the bone bonded especially could probably do this you can actually have limited sight through it oh yeah um so i would like to run a quick scene with the three that we just made like sort of figuring out what we're going to do with this apartment space for the documentary and then uh cut over to the others where we figure out what they're going to do with that information cool awesome um cool everyone would just want to take the characters that they detailed yeah. As well. Sounds good to me. Okay, so what what are all of the three of us looking for out of this setup? It is a it's a lousy, tiny, crummy, dingy apartment. Um, I mm. think that the grease spots are not just limited to the wall, mm -hmm. right? Because this is uh, uh, Ulfred's apartment, and and Ulfred is a tinkerer, right? Mm -hmm. uh, a, mm -hmm. a breaker of things, a a a person with greasy hands, and yeah. so. It's not just food grease. There's like little spatters of like lubricant and mm -hmm. burn marks mm -hmm. on the walls. Like this place <laughs> has just seen better days. And there's yeah. like little bits of, of, of wire and sinew and solder drippings just all over because the pile of rags is that's the sleeping spot. The hot plate does what it does and everything mm -hmm. else is just a workshop. Yeah. So, so what is what is this crew of three looking for, uh, out of setting up here? You like, know, it's it's like get get rid of the stuff that like is totally like unbearable, but like a little clutter, not too bad. You know, that's a lot of mm -hmm. character. It sort of gives a unique story to the thing we're looking at. Uh, mm -hmm. Even if it's you go Ugh, a little bit, you know, that that can be good. So we can mm -hmm. work with everything that we got here. We don't mm -hmm. want to we don't want to clean away the character. We I feel like that's Mervin talking to Fleetus. Yeah. yeah. Right? As Fleetus is like trying, is degreasing that window. Yeah. He's like, what the, what, what, what the, what, okay, look, look at that. Yeah, Over it's the, like, uh, good, you know, you get the grease off the window, but like the soldering like bits here and there and like the weird workshop contraptions, we can leave some of that mess because that will be charming. I, okay, it's sure. Some be. of it, some of it's going to be charming, but like over there on the, that, that thing has at least five legs on it. I don't think that carrier drones are supposed to even have legs. All right. Mervin, we don't like, like that. We don't have to have that on camera. You are the boss. But I'm just saying. You know, I, I, I'm, I'm playing the other engineer, not the director. <laughs> okay. You are not the boss. <laughs> Get that out into the camera on this little, little out of frame. That'll look, that'll look good. Look, and if you know, and if it doesn't work, you can cut it in editing. Not a huge deal, because you're the editor, also. Oh, right. No, that's <laughs> fine. I, I... You think Franker's gonna be all right with this? Like, just standing over there, like staring at a wall. <laughs> you know, I, I'm just covering whatever needs to be cut. Whatever Franker wants, that's good with me. That's cool with me. That's good as gravy. I'm just, you know, it's just like if we get some amount of work done here, he can tell us what else to do. This is this is just B roll anyway, you know. We'll probably see like fucking like twelve seconds of this shit hole. All right, you know. F fine, fair, fair. What's what? Why is Franker staring at the wall, Ryan? <sighs> Hey, Franker, you seeing something cool over there? I mean, I'm there's waiting, crazy shit. I'm waiting for that window to be sparkling before I take my first view out of there. You know why we picked this room. It's got the best view of the area. It's got the best view of the area. It's and the, the only one broken. with a window that that actually looks like a window. Yeah. So if, you, if you're telling me, can, can I see through it with, without any crud on the window right now? And Fletus like looks at Mervin and, and shout him real quick, looks back at the window, swipes one piece of like junk. The window is like pristine. It looks great. Yeah. But but just yeah. one little piece of, of crud off of it. Uh yeah, I, I think uh th think I, th I think I think you're good, Mr. Franker. White vinegar T and water always does the trick. Take take it take take it take a gander out this window. He, uh, he scrapes a little uh, smudge off the wall uh, that he was staring at, and he just uh, goes over to the window. 
Uh, Would you like get a get a glimpse of some Cthulhu runes or something, my man? Yeah, I, I, I think this is uh, I think this is the right uh, this is the right the right spot the right view. Uh, I think this will this will look really nice. Uh, I know uh, you've got the you got the eye, Mervin, but uh, you know I've got the vision and 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 seeing this view of the area from this window, oh, it's gonna be great. I mean that steps on steps. It's a lot of step out there. And I I think the that conversation like turns sort of muted and muffled as we travel the length of the cable back over to the other apartment and now we're in Cephas place. Uh mm. so what does the interface that we're sort of either seeing or hearing this through look like? And then we can get to the rest of the apartment. So you uh we, we kinda travel uh from the trio in in uh Ufric's apartment uh to the the hidden uh almost hidden uh wire uh that is traveling between and then we kind of travel inside of it and into a conduit of, of sorts and we kind of see the the neurons firing mm-hmm. uh as we get into the other room and then pull out into an actual cord itself uh into kind of a a larger deck and then the camera pulls out from that and we can see a wired deck that is uh directly connected to this cable that has um a a hand kind of typing away at a couple things every now and then um and Mm -hmm. then moving a cursor around every now and then um on a touchpad and uh on the deck itself are some built-in speakers uh, that are like vibrating, uh, like some like fleshy speakers that vibrate and create the sound that we're hearing. Nice. Um, and I'm constantly adjusting. Uh, so this is Sifa's hand that's constantly adjusting this. Um, and there's also kind of like a almost a a, a presence, a, a glow of sorts. Um, around the the deck itself uh, and the cable. Excellent. Um, again, what's the rest of the apartment look like? What is what is Cephas place like in contrast to Wolfred's? Uh, you're mute again. Sorry. It's okay. Thing. Okay, yeah. great. So yeah, <laughs> let's say let's say where the other room has sort of a soldered, uh, burning smell. There's a you know an inevit- like an, a mildew thing that's just really hard to get rid of. Mm-hmm. Um, a lot. Let's say there's like a leak like in the corner of the room. This this fluid that's like going into this bucket that needs to get done for like two or three times a day. <laughs> so it's like you know. Not super pleasant, but in a way, more pleasant because it's much less cluttered. There's a keen sense of organization. You can see great personal efforts are made by Sifa to to work against the living arrangements that she has to, to make it more livable. Let's say there's like uh, some fake flowers in the corner. Mm-hmm. <laughs> um, you know, it's, it's, it's a lot to get over. Like, you know, it's stinky. It's it has a weird ambient dampness to it but it's it's kind of it's kind of cuter it has a sort of damp cute feeling to it mm-hmm. uh i'm gonna add a, a small detail um on on the wall that, that by a uh, a hallway that leads to uh the bedrooms is a picture and on that picture is uh sifa and um uh, a man and uh, two kids, um, and uh, her family is out today. Hmm. Uh, probably at the grandparents. Nice. Um. So I think we're all kind of huddled around this Mm -hmm. this this deck interface and listening to what what it is that they're doing and what do we hear that troubles us (sighs) 
what what is troubling it's like we would know that there would be a sort of propaganda element Mm -hmm. to documentary crew coming in um i think maybe i mean the the cable running in is of immediate concern right because they need to not mess with that Mm -hmm. yeah Definitely, definitely. So definitely. Do, do, do we just hear one of them going, what the fuck is this? And then we get like a lot of interference as they like move something off the cable because yeah, it like yeah, vibrates yeah. and we. Yeah. And there's like a shriek. Like, mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah. So it's like, ah, you know, a uh, Kurt is got a, uh, uh, got, got a cigarette in one hand and, uh, and a Schwitzer and Sons hamburger in the other. And he's like, <laughs> ah, God, oh my, Jesus, Jesus Louise. Uh, what is it? These guys going to start messing with this thing now? Or freaking, you know. Sifa, did they, did, they, did, they, did they find the wire? Did they find the cable? Uh, she types a little bit. I, I don't think they've directly found it. But, it's, but it, they're they're close. It feels like they're very close. Yeah, closer you, than we would like. Th- mm. Then you've got to do something. Someone has to. Do we knock on the door? Make a distraction? Can what what? I. I I mean, you've got gadgets in there, right? Yeah, I've got gadgets in there. All right, let me. I'm gonna uh, kind of. Uh, hit a few buttons on the other side of the keyboard, um, mm-hmm. and then I'm gonna like turn and and put both hands on it, and I'm gonna hack into some of your uh, gadgets. Okay, uh, to cool. Get them operating. Uh, so just to turn on like a random assortment of yep. of things. Awesome. So this seems to me like the kind of thing where a role might be needed uh, I agree. to. Fantastic. So. Uh, make sure you take a look at your abilities uh, because your way as a bone bonded is the way of the network. Uh, abilities in this game uh, function uh, to affect the dice, uh, successes, that sort of thing. And you have a few different options. There are at need abilities, right? There's mm-hmm. one you can just use whenever you want to use it. Uh, there is an ability that you can use once per scene. Uh, and right now we are in a scene, obviously. Yeah. And then there is a session ability where you, which you can only do once per session. So um, if you are just rolling to like wirelessly activate some stuff, it seems yeah. to me like that's not a like a network resource, right? So I don't think that glitch in the network would apply, but you are doing thinking- something on the network. So ancient flex. Ancient Flex absolutely uh, sounds like it applies here. Cool. Um, uh, why, why, why don't you read that real quick to the to the people so they know what's going on with Ancient mm-hmm. Flex? It, yeah. So Ancient Flex is a net need ability for the Bone Bonded, and it says, whenever you roll to do something with the network, take two of your dice pool and set them to successes before you roll. Say how your giants ensured those successes. That should just say giant. Sorry, that's a typo. That's, that's fixed now. <laughs> Uh, uh, yes, SDR and ensure those successes. Absolutely. Um, I think uh, the the bond that I have with my my giant is um, uh, extremely intimate, and we we know when each other is kind of panicking. Mm-hmm. And I think uh, my giant, whose name is uh, Feld- Feldra. 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 Uh, Feldra uh, senses my my need to to do this quickly, um, okay. uh, and and also knows of the importance of this this uh, connection and it not being found. So I think uh, she kind of gets in there and really uh, helps out. Okay. Uh, so which of your details are you using? Let's see. Um. Gosh, it the the closest thing I can think of is I'm trying to protect my family right now. Mm-hmm. And that that kind of, that's exactly the kind of justification that works, right? Like because yeah. it speaks to your character's motivations and it lets you use all ten dice, baby. Absolutely. So, so as a group, we should decide what the difficulty of this is. Now, 
the devices that Ulfred makes are not like wired network devices. Mm-hmm. They're just like things that that they tinker with. Um, so I think that ups things considerably. Uh, difficulties go from one through five. One is mm-hmm. it's trivial, but not quite trivial, right? Yeah. And five is the gods would have difficulty accomplishing this. Um, this feels to me like somewhere in between three and four, just because of the urgency of the situation mm-hmm. and because of the nature of what you're trying to kick off. Yeah. Uh, so how, what is that? You all feeling three or four for this? I'm thinking three because we're also kind of like that is definitely the semi analog component. It's definitely the toughest element. We're also we're physically close, so that is mm-hmm. we're relatively physically close. Mm-hmm. So that's good. You have familiarity with the sources. Everything else is in our favor. So Great. I think three probably works. I like it. So you take your pool of ten. Uh, we yeah. are using your hardwired deck. Yeah. Uh, that adds a die, so you have 11. Nice. Uh, and then you set two of those to successes. Absolutely. So I've uh, got two successes and nine to roll. Yep, and you need one success, and fives <laughs> and sixes are hits. So oh, this, this should so nice. this should be trivial. One, two, three, four, five, six. Uh, that's uh, eight successes <laughs> total. <laughs> Uh, yeah, so that's a success. Yeah, uh, <laughs> definitely. That that sort of cleared things. Um, so that is an amazing success. I think that the between your abilities and the giant, like you can basically run roughshod through whatever's going on there. So in addition to activating these devices to like cause a distraction, I mean you can do whatever you want to if you want to short cameras if you want to like blow up their equipment if you want to make sure that you can now uh have their camera see one thing but the actual feed see something else like Mm -hmm. you basically have in shadow run terms you've got like five marks on this system (laughs) you can do whatever you want to (laughs) absolutely um so i'm i'm thinking i'm picturing kind of like uh, first, uh, a couple distractions on the table behind them mm-hmm. uh, start going off. Uh, little whirly gigs, uh, the, the five-legged thing, mm-hmm. are, starts crawling around and, and jumps off the table. It's it's very uh, Toy Story when <laughs> when Spike's toys come to life. Exactly. Yeah. So uh, these things are happening. They're making a lot of noise, and and the the three. Uh, turn around, turn their attention away from the the area where this wire is going through, um, and 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 start dealing with it. And I, I think they're they're wanting to get it on video. <laughs> okay. Um, so they want to capture this, right? Because this is, is it's fun, it's weird, it's this kind is of local funny. color. Yeah, it's local color, uh, that sort of stuff. And uh, as they are doing that, when whenever they're looking through the camera at uh whenever it goes near the wire it looks like just an ordinary lump on the ground Mm, nice it doesn't look like anything special so like they would have no uh feeling of we should investigate this further awesome uh is i i think that um what we're going to do is if you move over to slide six real quick we have a space for other details right Mm. Uh, and details are just sort of um, things that are notable, right? The, the the way I describe it in the in the text is that whenever you play a game with other people, we're all imagining this space that we share, right? Um, and we all have our own sort of vision of it. But when mm-hmm. you sort of speak something into existence, when you when you declare a detail, you are saying, no, this particular thing is true for all of us, right? Okay. Um, so I think that uh, you should take a detail. I'm just going to drag one of these cards over and you can, uh, it's just a text box. You can click it and write whatever you want to. But I think that um, some portion of either your deck or the uh, giant's awareness is like embedded into their equipment now. Mm. You have a level of access that it's like just a constant availability to to get either what they're doing or or uh, to be able to affect what they're what they're working with, so I think that uh, making sure that that is salient and known 
is important because it could definitely affect things uh, later on down the road. I think, I think this is uh, kind of how we, we set up for them to see exactly what we want them to see. Mm -hmm. I think that's good. And I think uh, at this point in time, you did so well that uh, you can um, put in that detail uh, just in parentheses, put five, uh, put uh, difficulty five because because of the proximity of that sort of cable, you're so connected that they would have to undertake a Herculean effect or effort to be able to figure out what's going on. Yeah. Right. Like your giant subconscious is basically working away at this. It's very mm -hmm. subtle. I like it. Great. Um, so we hear them like scrambling to, to, to capture all this on film. And we're sort of back in, in Sifa's apartment and Ulfred kind of like uh, settles back down. Um, that was close. Good job. I mean, really, that was nice. Oops. That was that was cool. And, and thank you, cool. thank you, Feldra. And uh, she kind of she kind of pets the the ground, uh, where kind of like because because what I'm uh, imagining is like when we're at home, like the the giant has room to to spread out, mm -hmm. right? Um. So yeah, the, <laughs> effectively, the, right? The giant's awareness can be in whatever technological things are around mm -hmm. exactly so uh, I, I thank Feldra as well shout out Feldra and uh, as as uh, as Kurd says that Ulfrith kind of looks over are, are you really eating that hamburger it's from you these? no I haven't tried those they're it's... really good I mean they have like a kind of weird stringy thing and sometimes a little like gravelly but really good it's <laughs> crazy and cheap you know not too bad burgers cheap they do have some stuff that is a little bit more expensive they have a steak and or steak they don't say it's steak they say meat and uh, meat and lettuce chop pretty solid put mm. you out a couple of you know credits bucks <laughs> debits mm. bucks uh, but uh, yeah, I'm kind of. You want the? You see, you, you're looking askance at this, so I, I'm not going to offer it to you. <laughs> but it is welcome to you. Hmm. We we do have some meat strips as well. If you want me to cook some of those up. Uh They they got a nice sizzle to them. Uh, really good with breakfast. Yeah. Really good. I mean, yeah. Are the guy? Are they shady? Yeah. Do I like them? No. Is it very convenient? And was I very hungry walking over here at six in the freaking morning to get, you know, camera ready so they were making sure these guys aren't touching the freaking stringy thing? I forgot where my train of thought was going with that. Uh, but, uh, you want a bite? I, so I think that, uh, Ofred, like, kind of looks at the two of you, not quite believing that you're that into this, but also, we're all friends. We're all part of the same, this, we have all the same goals. And so the camera like does this, um, Ren and Stimpy esque zoom in, right. Where like, it's, <laughs> over, it's absolutely overly detailed, um, shot of the, of the burger. And there's all kinds of funky shit going on with this meat patty meat. Classic. Yeah. Yep. Classic and, late nineties. Yep. And you, and you, everything is like, a little too saturated and there's mm -hmm. just the the sound of almost like that that orchestral string like rising like that tension noise mm -hmm. yeah. and as uh Ulfred's mouth like bites down onto it uh that is the screen wipe that takes us to uh another scene and i think Perfect. that that scene needs to be somewhere between the 224th and 230th floors Mm -hmm. of this place where we can do the thing in an RPG that we would normally reserve for TVs and movies. And we can build some dramatic irony as we meet some of the executives Ooh. of this company who cool. are, who are doing this, this meat stuff. So we flip <laughs> back down to our character pool 
and I think we have uh, a triumvirate of of executives uh, who are having a meeting with a shadowy fourth presence that is uh, doing this in some t- sort of uh, virtual uh, fashion. Uh, so we will uh, go ahead and we will name uh, three characters. I'm going to do a little bit of cleanup on this um, while you all are typing because I'm going to move that box over there. I'm going to move this box over here. This is why I like using Google Slides for this because mm-hmm. we can put those all there. Nice, good, next to each other. You two can begin typing. And I can make another box that says da, 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 uh, documentary crew. And I can make that box a lovely light yellow color and make those all a lovely light yellow color as well. And then we do it again. And we find that the name of the company is Sh- Schwilter and Sons farming operation. I could not remember how to pronounce that word as I was looking at it. I just, I kind of froze because I, my brain wanted to say shit Vilter, which is not shit Vilter. Schwilter and Sons farming operation, uh, corporate execs. Spell words correctly, win go. prizes. Yeah, put that over there. <laughs> I love that. Uh, oh, they're so excitable. Make that a light blue. Bam, bam, bam. Make those light blue, and real quick, we have Marketing, research, and uh, admin. All right. All right, so we have made these people. Um, given the time, this is probably going to be the last scene that we do before we do a quick uh, debrief of everything and get this wrapped up because I want to keep this to a couple of hours. Uh, so what is the the sort of goal of, of this scene. I feel like it, I mean, we're talking about high level execs in this company. Mm-hmm. I feel like mm-hmm. there, that we need to have some, uh, some really shady goings on, uh, around here, uh, with everything that's happening. So what, uh, what purpose, what end purpose are we playing toward with this? Bottom line, these guys are suspicious of us. Um, so, so I'm trying to get, the admin to uh to to get some locals in on the scene but the admin is probably not excited to get some locals in on the scene because uh you know the the source of the meat is um you know human based let's be real like what is it gonna what's the shape that's the fucking Um, thing so i i had i will have an add-on for that I think it's because Mimir is our is our uh, end goal here, and mm-hmm. all of Mimir's main data banks are actual like giant brains in mm-hmm. vats. Mm-hmm. Those don't last forever, so I think it's human meat, and it's also like old dead giant brain. Excellent. Mm-hmm. So. So it's a multi-source. So like me and marketing, I'm like, look, we just want to get more hamburgers out there. But it's like the bigger idea is like, dude, we need these brains for Mimir. It's not all about hamburgers. Man. Right. And, and and we need people to trust us um, is, is your pitch. I, I drop it in the character. 
Look, no, 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 no. Listen, 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 listen. This will not fly. I don't give a single credit shit about whether or not the people here care about us. This is a corporate building. We work for the gods. <laughs> for the gods. For, for... <laughs> am, I, am I talking to myself here? We work for the gods. No, there's two other people in this room here. Uh, that, that, you know, prove it to me. Prove it. Give me a good idea. Come on. Well, here's a good idea, or here's a bad idea that needs to be a good idea. The bad idea is that everyone, the talk of the town is how, look, I'm not trying to bring negativity into this room, but the talk of the town is that they don't trust the product. They don't trust the product. Yes, they're getting it. They don't trust it, okay? That needs to be assuaged, okay? Because seeking knowledge, that is Mimir's task. That is not our task, seeking knowledge. That is what they want. We don't want them seeking knowledge. How do you get someone to stop seeking knowledge? Give them a little bad knowledge that's true enough to be true, but not true enough. To, you know, it's called a limited hangout, and that's kind of the situation I'm pitching here. Put enough people on. Oh, I trust them. Yeah. There you go. So that's the bad idea. That's a good idea. Dude, look. They need to eat more of this shit. Does it... Arya, does it taste good? Yeah. It tastes fantastic. It tastes now, great. Now, the, the research shows that everybody loves the flavor. They can't get enough of it. The thing that's turning them off... God, your voice is so soothing. <laughs> is, the, is the hair and the little bits... Mm -hmm. that end up in there because our filtration systems are probably not as good as they need to be. I'm yeah. telling you, we need to expand just a little bit more to get those uh, filtration systems up and running. And research shows if we get that grid out of there, golden. So, I have a, a, a counter-counter pitch for you. Listen, this is coming, coming, coming straight off the dome. You ready for this? Yeah. What if we, what if we cut off the rest of their food supplies? What if we, what if this is the only thing they can eat? Fuck the filtration systems. Doesn't matter. Uh -huh. Doesn't matter. Okay. Grit, grit, hair. Who cares? They have to eat it. All right. Trust. Who cares about trust? You're starving. So that's an interesting idea because um, you're basically, essentially hoping to kill their hope and in killing their hope that kills their desire to seek out more honestly i love it i think it's great you know get the powers of that be working on that you know all for it i can make that i can make the hopelessness sing definitely uh, gonna have to spin it correctly are, are you are are you are you questioning bethes's ability to spin I I think I think you're gonna do great. Uh, I think this Thank is you. gonna test Thank really you. well uh, uh, as for whatever you come up with. So uh, I'm really excited to get this in front of people. So the sooner the sooner the better. Would be my first strategy. Uh, it's ugly work basically we're doing here, where it's not I'm selling you a nice future. It's you're living in the shit world that you're living. Sorry, the shoot world that you're living in. Uh, and people don't usually like that, but I'm not liking it is the point. So it's not my, you know, look, I've done a little bit of this and I'm, it's, what am I talking about myself here? What am I talking about <laughs> myself here? Right? It's going to be great. It's going to be, I can work with it. I can give me a week. I can work with it. All right. All right. All right. All right. I'll, I'll get the right focus groups and uh, it'll be fine. <laughs> Does this make you feel like A, okay, B, quite bad, C, you know, Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, the, these, the blackness I've, I've, I've got some I've got some good uh, good ideas for the questionnaires so uh, plenty of leading questions uh, we'll, we'll, we'll get them there okay I like what I'm hearing I like the the, the team spirit I like the camaraderie this is amazing uh, Merc like leans over and snorts something up his nose real quick <sighs> all right 
Yes, this is this is good. This is good. This is good. I yeah. like this. I like this a lot. Uh, Bethes, yeah. you have uh, let's say a ten percent increase to your budget for this project. Whoa. Uh, uh, Aria, you also get the same ten percent. Just know if this doesn't work, if this doesn't work, you're both going to absolutely end up in the product that we're shelling to these absolutely desperate fucks. You understand what I'm saying to you? It's gonna work. Yeah. <laughs> Nothing to worry about. Nothing to worry about. It's cool. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. And then do you Mer- like that bone? Do you like that bone? Uh, uh, Grebus, Grebus, in uh, my my assistant, he managed to pick it up on the 117th floor. It's pure, man. It's pure bone you got up in your schnoz. Oh, I can. It's good. <laughs> I can taste sound. It's amazing. <laughs> I think. <laughs> That is where that particular bit <laughs> of, uh, <laughs> uh, fades out. And the stakes oh, have been raised. The stakes have been raised. Uh, so let's flip over to the story tracker real quick. I think we discovered uh, very cleanly who who they are. <laughs> right? Yeah. We can we can mark that off completely. Um, I think that for the clandestine cable, we managed to keep the flow going right Mm -hmm. uh it's established and everything is is looking good with that and the documentary crew is all set up and ready to go so we have neatly i think marked off the first sets of these sort of story trackers uh and then we if we were playing longer we could do a quick breakout and we'd find the interstitial bits right the next steps that are going to be happening with all this Mm -hmm. um not every time do you have both boxes checked at the same time like sometimes it's it's a feel thing Right, which is going to be really interesting for me to describe in the actual procedural rules, but still, um, if you don't think it's like worth both boxes, right? If the job didn't get done, then you halfway, you mark it halfway there, and you're and you're and you're good to go. Mm-hmm. Um, but we have successfully run through uh, a couple of scenes in this game. We have made a, a bunch of characters. Uh, we did not stop and make Grievous, which is a shame because I think uh, <laughs> cutting cutting to Grievous, uh, trying trying to get some pure bone. And by the way, I, some bone. I really <laughs> like the idea that, that the drug is just powdered bone. Like mm-hmm. that's fantastic. Um, or it's a drug called bone. Who knows? It, does, yeah. it doesn't really matter. Um, I don't know. Grievous doesn't even know. No, I, I, fuck. Grievous doesn't know shit. Just Gre- Grievous that's, knows how to get good bone, and that's about old. it. That's right. Uh, so that is a taste of Iron at a Reforge. Um, oh, I want more. <laughs> <laughs> well, good. I don't have to Analyze ask. What do you think it. of my game? <laughs> uh, no, it rocks. It's really fun. Lots of avenues to go. This and that. Pretty. I love the creating characters thing. You could imagine how if you had like a long running campaign or something where you were telling a longer story, trying to hit all the different locations you could pull from a great swath of characters. Yeah. A yeah. Lot you, of things that you hadn't experienced in previous games. So you'd end up, cool. you'd end up like Charlie day with like the conspiracy board behind <laughs> yeah. you. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I, I really like the possibilities like even with the just the the six npcs that we came up with and like a few more allude to that like we could easily mix those groups together like having the conspiracy go deeper even right mm-hmm. um and maybe the documentary crew can become part of this uh this corporate takeover of the the food source and all that sort of stuff and and everything and it's it's uh having those interactions on the table as well mm-hmm. where we could just hop into those characters is, is so such a wild uh, concept that I I've never had the thought to experience before, but I love it so much. Yeah. I, I, I think um, most tabletop role-playing experiences don't get B and C plots. Mm-hmm. Right. If, you, if you're talking uh, about yeah. in, in, in right. TV terms, right? It, there's in a TV episode, you typically have the main thing that's happening in the story, and yeah. then you have the B plot and maybe a C plot where you're like are following different characters, and you're maybe it's just something that's just about those characters, and it's a little bit of development for them, or maybe it yeah. ties back into the main plot. It's hard to say, but it 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 lends interest to the stories because if you focus on the same people all the time, then that there's a, a wear factor. Yeah. to that right and so being able to do that at the table i think is really really strong because 
we don't typically get to. Um, that's the purview of the game master. Yeah. And in the, I've, I've told Gannon in this uh, in in, in uh, other conversations, but like I see this happen on Neo Scum. I see it happen on Campaign Skyjacks as well, where you get uh, entire episodes where the the main cast are playing other characters. Mm-hmm. But those characters had to be developed ahead of time and you're given some blurbs and trained improvisers are the ones who are picking up the reins and like diving into these characters. Yeah. Plus it's edited to sound great, which is all fine. That's what a podcast does. But like we just did this live, right? And Gannon's a trained improviser. I have some theater background. I play a lot of games and Ryan, I know you play a lot of games too, but like mm-hmm. we're not built necessarily to do this. And yet we had everything we needed to just play compelling scenes yeah. with characters we just made up. Like, not to toot my own horn, but this is really cool. That was fun. <laughs> it's fun. It's really fun. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, that's the thing is, like, improv out of all the, the schools, I'm sure, would benefit from you know, people being like, well, you got to get the training to be able to do this. Or mm-hmm. you got to get the training. And it's, like, really truthfully, like, the best book on improv, McNapier's Improvise, I think is what it's called, is, like, honestly, you're probably better off not if you don't get training you're like you can do everything that these guys are doing <laughs> it, it takes a lot of listening practice. and thinking but it's like you know like uh, yeah you anyone can like uh, yeah. hop into multiple characters and just make interesting choices and you you'll be surprised if you find yourself in this the setting sets itself up for I, that really nicely i i really like this as like a tool to better your improv as well because mm-hmm. even in a campaign you can drive certain characters like you're in a one shot. Yeah. And like and just make the most wild uh choices for those characters because who cares if they, you know, get killed off because they're not the the the, the main main character that you care about or yeah. the group of characters that you care about. And and by the same token, even if the first character that you create it, say your story doesn't get sort of like we got a little bit gonzo with this not a ton but there was a little bit of of whimsy to what we were doing but say mm-hmm. you're telling a, a a much more straight story about like the suffering of the community and and the fall of the gods say your character dies the first one you made that's okay mm-hmm. characters die in stories and it do, it's, it doesn't end things yeah. with this because the story isn't about your one group of characters it's about everything that goes into a, a community rising up and taking down the gods yeah like it's yeah and that's also pretty cool like if your guy dies and then you have like all these characters who are like here we had a lot of characters who seem sort of like antithetical to or like anti anti like mm-hmm. a sort of like god take taking down type situation so i mean that's also a cool situation where your guy dies and then you have to take on one of these guys and somehow yeah. this guy gets flipped and continues yeah to use it. it's a, it's a, it's a, i mean that's kind of the, also a cool thing about like the oh we get to x point somehow and yeah. like and seeing how far you can go off the path before you get back to the thing is mm-hmm. very nice yeah, Good. I didn't. I didn't even think about half of the potential connections until you know afterwards. Like, if if my character died, uh, I've got a significant other who mm-hmm. also is a significant mm-hmm. other with myself and and my giant, and maybe that would be my new character, right? Yeah. I could I could hop into them and use that that emotion of my character's death as fodder for for playing this other character and that that's just such a brilliant like mechanic cool i'm it, it, it's one of those things like i i've been play testing this with some really really great people like alex and b and jeff are just mm-hmm. amazing players they're amazing performers and you expect just a high quality experience no matter what and it's what we've been getting in the podcast it's really really good um and i have started a campaign of this with my home group and they will roll with my bullshit because they're my home group, right? You know, mm-hmm. I yeah. like th- there's a certain level of, of leniency they're going to give me just because we've been gaming together for almost 10 years. Um, but when I played this with Spencer on Tuesday and I played tonight with y'all, it was one of those moments of like, oh, no, this actually works, right? Yeah. It actually is a functional thing that people who don't have a vested interest in its success either for a podcast or for a, a game night, like it 
it functions. It's good. I'm very, very pleased with how people are receiving it. So yeah, I, yeah like, I, and you're dang funded. So. Yeah, yeah, the I, game I'm funded. So happy about that. Ah, oh, me too. It's all That's of this right. has been very gratifying. It's a it's a wild new experience, and I'm very very thrilled. Mm-hmm. Uh, so yeah, uh, as we are closing up this stream for this evening, my friends, tell the people who you are once more. Tell them where they can find you, where they can get more of the particular uh, zhuzh that you bring to an experience. Uh, and Ganon, we'll start with you since we started with Ryan last time. Yeah, what's up, Ganon? Ganon Reedy, check out Neo Scum, or uh, uh, get me to do some art commissions for you. Yes. At Ganon Reedy, check it out. And Ryan. Yeah, I'm Ryan Bolter. Uh, you can check out Character Creation Cast. Uh, you can see my branding in my studio here. Um, I've uh, co-host of that. I also do the sound design and editing for a horror borealis. Um, I also do the dialogue editing for the broadswords, uh, and uh, I am also working on my own game uh, with a very talented uh, designer, Amor Amaraz. Uh, and the game is called Chimera. It's a powered by the Apocalypse game where you blend multiple genres together and do some really, really fun stuff with it. Awesome. And I am Tracy Barnett. I am the project manager for the One Shot uh, Podcast Network. I am the editor of the One Shot Podcast. I am the narrator of the Iron Edit Reforged Puppet Strings play t- actual play test podcast that is on the One Shot Network. I'm the one who's writing this game that we played tonight. The link to it is in the chat. This has been an absolute pleasure. Everybody, thank you for watching. Thank you for uh, taking the time to tune in. Ryan, Gannon, thank you both very much for taking the time to play this with me. I really greatly appreciate it. And with that, I will finish it out in the way that James D'Amato will always do better. See you next time, heroes.